Jerome Rivera, the Renegade. Or is it the Shy Guy? Which one are we dealing with today? Um, the Renegade for right now. So Let's see where it takes us. LFA 10. Getting to start up with a big promotion, one of those next level promotions. Your thoughts on getting this opportunity and signing with them? I'm super excited to fight for a promotion like LFA. Um, I've always fought more on the regional scene, AAA MMA, um, local fights, King of the Cage. King of the Cage is awesome also, but I'm really excited to get in there at the LFA. I feel like they're a real promotion that that uh, takes care of their fighters and really recognizable promotion. Do we see you, was it for 66 at Havoc, or was that a uh, legacy that you, you did get to debut, to that have an amateur a, fight? That was like Fresquez promotions. Well, okay. um, that was, I think, Holly's last fight before she went to the UFC. Um, they might have been teamed up half with Legacy, but I'm not too sure exactly on that one. Cause I was gonna say, I thought you had <coughs> minor Legacy experience then. Yeah, no. When they came, they came the other time. Uh, Legacy came to Albuquerque. I think I had a fight lined up with somebody else, like King of the Cage or something. So I didn't get to get on that other opportunity. That Talking about guys. opportunity, we saw you recently return. It was a hiatus. You're yeah. taking some time off. Short notice fight. Still choking fools out. Yeah, a uh, 16 month layoff, um, needed to take some time to get my head right, um, you know, take care of my body. I had a lot of like little lingering injuries here, my knees, my neck, um, elbows, both of them jacked up. I was kind of just, every time I'd go to training, I was just hurting myself, I was all banged up. Um, it was leading to me not being as motivated. Um, that 16 months I took off though really just helped my mindset so much. I felt like before I never used to really believe in my skill set a whole lot um, and in that time I took off I was teaching a whole lot of people I was going in sharpening all my skills up and I just feel like for my mental game it helped me a lot now I feel like I'm at that level and I'm ready to compete with anybody also during that time for people that were following following you we saw you get back to nature a lot and I honestly didn't think we were ever gonna see you fighting again I thought one day from Josh or Philip or somebody that's close to you, we hear that you became a lumberjack because it seemed like you were climbing mountains, enjoying nature, and that's what you'd been up to during that layoff. Yeah, I just kind of took some time to just do what I love and have fun, you know. Um, after the Jesus Urbina fight, I had a couple injuries, so I had to move back down to Santa Fe. Um, when I was down there, I got a full-time job down there at uh, Lithia Motors. I was doing service writing, uh, and that job was hectic. I was day in, day out, 7 a.m., 7 p.m., couldn't really even make time for training and after a while there it was just so much stress I just wasn't enjoying work I was stressed out because I wasn't able to train and then uh, I just kind of told myself I got to find myself again and started started off just doing what I love you know backpacking the outdoors going and having fun just uh, slowly just doing things that I love and that led me to get back to fighting I realized you know training is truly what I love I, I never went away from MMA in that in that 16 months I was still always in the gym but I just wasn't motivated. Um, I didn't have anything to really keep me going and get me in the gym. Um, yeah, I, I, uh, yeah, that 16 months off was good for my mental. Now coming off of that big win, what did you think of that fight? That was the big fight I thought, Jesus Urbina. What did that mean to you, that fight? Jesus Urbina, that was a huge fight for me. Um, when I first started fighting, I remember the first live event I ever went to. Uh, Jesus Urbina actually fought my old teammate Adrian Cruz. So when I saw them fighting, I always remembered him from that day. I knew he was a tough fighter because Cruz is, is as tough as they come. And so I had always followed Jesus' career a little bit, and then I saw he was a flyweight, you know, so as an amateur, I was keeping my eye on him. And uh, uh, as King of the Cage, August 2015, I'd gotten my fight with uh, Alejandro Perez went out there, he's a teammate of Jesus's. I felt like I did really good against him. I took him out, I think it was in the second round. Um, and that night, Jesus had fought somebody also, and I saw Jesus fight, and I was like, I can take this guy. Um, a couple weeks later, John Judy is like, hey, you want the Jesus Urbina fight? And I just got this big cheeser on my face. I'm like, let's do it. And then I felt like that was a real test, a test to see where I was at, because um, getting in there with someone with the skill set that Jesus has uh, really helped me test and see like where my grappling was um, because I had seen him go with tough guys like Cruz and I would seen him go in there with guys like you know even though it's an early finish he's had experience against guys like Urso, um, Tim Sosa, a lot of people in there so going in there I felt was a big test for me and I felt like I really passed that one with flying colors. Um, I was the best I ever felt was against Jesus that's why it's kind of strange that I stopped I took the 16 month layoff after but 
in the end it benefited me, but yeah, in that Jesus fight, um, striking felt good, uh, takedown defense felt good, um, jiu-jitsu felt like I underestimated my jiu-jitsu a little bit going into that fight, and when I got in there with him, I felt good jiu-jitsu as well, so good learning experience. For you, looking at your stature, obviously everyone's going to think this guy wants to keep it striking, keep it standing, use those God-given abilities, but I've watched you through the amateurs, I, I've read your bio, I know that wrestling was the first art, jiu-jitsu was the second art, I believe, and outside of some kickboxing, the Judgment MMA series, or Judgment Kickboxing series that we yeah. saw you get an amateur title in, you were subbing dudes your whole amateur career. Yeah. So I think it was this last fight, and that you're being a fight between those two that we've really seen you start to use your striking in the cage. Yeah, that's one thing is, um, in my amateur days, like first coming up on the scene, um, I would always go to what was best for me, my wrestling, my jiu-jitsu. Um, I felt like my kickboxing was always there, it's just when it was time to get in the cage, I'd kind of tense up, you know. I would go to what was comfortable for me. Um, but yeah, I mean, against my, and that Jesus Rabina fight, in my last fight, I kind of told myself, you know, you need to get out there and work your hands a little bit, throw some kicks. And I feel, I mean, I've been training striking almost as long as I've been training jiu-jitsu. And I feel like my striking is really underrated and I mean it's just the more and more comfortable I get in there I feel like we're going to see it more and more in my elbows, my knees. Because um, with my frame, like you said, I mean I have, I have a, I can keep a good range on people, I feel like I have good movement. Um, yeah, so striking is coming soon. And where did you feel you improved? Short notice and everything, showing it off in that Elizondo fight. We saw a lot of tee kicks, a lot of using that range. Yeah, um, in that fight... And just in general, that fight I think was a good experience for me because I've never had to deal with a short notice fight before. And um, I think it was a good experience to handle that because I'm sure in my career I'm going to have a few short notice fights. Um, yeah, in that, in that fight specifically, I was working that push kick a lot. I knew I wanted to keep, keep him at my range because I knew he was really scrappy. Um, I knew he was a good grappler too, so our game plan going in there was to keep him at range, strike with him. Um, Again, in that fight, it was in the second round, um, I'd caught him with some good knees in the clinch, and I started tagging him pretty good, and then I kind of went back to my old grappling ways and went to that takedown, but um, I think just in that fight, I felt like I was so much more open-minded to my striking. I think it's just going to uh, progressively get better as I'm in there. What does that mean to you finishing a guy that has excellent grappling skills, such as Elizondo? What does that mean for you? Um, that was big for me also because when I was watching tape on him, I saw he's been in there with, uh, with a lot of really tough guys before. Um, his record was 6-7, and seven, but all of his fights were super close. Uh, really good grappler, so getting in there and being able to control him on the ground was even more confidence for me in the grappling department. Success with the grappling. We talked about you wanting to be more active with your striking. What is your style? How, how do you like, what do you consider your style? Um, I feel like my style really is kind of like adapting to people. I, I feel like I never like to give the same look. Like I'll get in there, start kickboxing with somebody. Um, I'm never going to give like the same kickboxing look. You know, I'll, sometimes I'll be moving my head a little bit more, see if my punches are landing. If my punches aren't landing, maybe I'll go to more of a kicking style. Um, and then also I have my grappling also. I, it just kind of depends on the fighter, who I'm fighting, how I feel like it matches up against them. but. Uh, you know, I feel like I, I, uh, I feel confident in all areas right now. Now, coming up, LFA 10, the debut, Zach Riley, the anointed warrior, I believe. Yeah. The opponent, you're coming to his hometown, and it's a little more dangerous with him because we saw him get gifted a big decision last time he fought at home. That aside, what do you think of uh, your opponent here? Um, Zach, I feel like he's a real flashy guy. He likes to throw a lot of spinning stuff. Um, he likes to try and get the crowd going. Um, I think that's good. You know, he calls himself the upset king and all this stuff. Um, I feel like I'm coming to take it to him. You know, he, uh, like I said, he throws a lot of spinning stuff, but it's, we're not having a karate fight. Um, there's going to be grappling involved. There's going to be knees. There's going to be elbows. Um, I feel like Zach is used to fighting like the longer fighter, and obviously I'm going to be a lot bigger than Zach. Um, I am ready to go in there and test his chin, test his grappling, wherever it goes. I feel really confident about it. Um, and yeah, like you said, definitely can't let it go to the judges. 
Um, just going off the judging criteria in general lately, I feel like there's, I mean, it's, uh, it's never good to leave it to the judges. You never want a chance giving them uh, the decision if you're going to win or not. So I'm going to go in there and put it on Zach and get that finish in his hometown. And now specifically, LFA, what is your, your goals, your focus, your expectations for joining this promotion? Um, you know, LFA is one of the best, one of the uh, top promotions around. And what I would say my goal for an MMA is it's not specifically, I don't have, I don't want to make it my goal to just get to the UFC. Like, hey, I got to be the UFC champion. That's going to define my career. Um, I want my goal, my goal is what I'm doing right now. I want to fight the best people in the world and I just want to have fun doing it and see where it, can, where it takes me. Just have a blast and enjoy it. Um, and I feel like LFA has some of the best guys in the world at that championship level and I want to um, fight the best in the world. I want to get a belt in a professional organization if that's LFA. Then uh, let's get a fight and let's get me going for that belt. So it was 16 month layoff. Now you've hit the ground running. Is it correct to say that there's a different intensity and focus to this run, this career now as it is that you're that how you're attacking it. Yeah, I feel like I'm finally ready to just fully invest myself into this. Um, I feel like before, I didn't, uh, you know, I turned pro kind of young, so I didn't always have the confidence in myself to say, you know, I could, I'll get in there with anybody anytime. Um, I didn't have the confidence to say, you know, I want to be a world champion or I want to be in the UFC. And I feel like uh, during that layoff, just mentally, I've taken strides. I feel really confident in myself. Um, I feel like I could get in there with anybody in the world and make them fight. And that's what I want to do. Between the media and attention you've been getting, we're getting you more used to this, but is it still a process working through just the natural shyness, whether it's expressing yourself in the cage or doing it through us forcing you to do interviews and whatnot? Yeah, I'm getting a little bit more used to it. Um, like you said, though, the best, best way for me to express myself is in the cage. I feel like that's when I can really show people who I am. Um, yeah, that's my best way of expressing myself, but I'm getting a little bit more used to the interviews and stuff like that, trying to, trying to get used to the, my social media game, but it's very hard. And even when we saw you the amateurs, has it gotten different for you that entering the cage and being able, even talking about letting your striking go, to not have that shyness, to just be more free? Is there, does it feel like when you step in there, you are stepping into a different world? As far as stepping in the cage, I feel like that's always about the same. Like. I'm, I'm feeling more comfortable doing my interviews and everything, but as far as getting in the cage goes, in my amateur career, I was definitely really nervous. Um, but as of lately, like since that Jesus Urbina fight, I feel like every time I've gotten in the cage, I'm just like completely focused in there. You know, I'm like not, I'm not even getting really nervous before I go out. I have like a clear head. Like the last two times I was in the cage, I really felt like when I was moving around there, like I was in the moment, I was very aware. Um, yeah, I think that's what I picked up just with more fights. and. Um, I feel really comfortable in there and I feel like every time I get in there I just try and imagine like I'm in the gym. I don't want to, I mean it's no different, we're getting in the cage just like we do plenty of times in practice, plenty of times in the gym. Only difference is there's a big crowd watching us. But when I'm in that cage all I can see is the person in front of me so I try not to focus on the crowd too much. LFA 10 though, what should that crowd expect? Uh, LFA 10. What should that crowd expect? Um, I'm bringing the heat. I'm coming to take it to Zach. Um, I don't really pay attention to a whole lot of who's the favorite and who's the underdog. You know, I mean, you might call me the favorite because I'm six and zero, but then we're fighting in his hometown. Um, I don't think that really matters. Who's the favorite? Who's the underdog? Once we get in there, um, I'm going to go show Pueblo, Colorado, who I am. Um, show everybody tuning into Axis TV. Show LFA everybody who uh, Santa Fe's been hiding away. Thank you for the time, sir. Thank you, Micah.